Okay, this lecture is about Markov uh, decision processes. And um, uh, let me explain what this uh, scenario is uh, in this search problem that we are going to discuss today and the, and the difference between this and the, the previous one. So basically the, the topic of today's lecture is non-deterministic search. So forget about the things that we have discussed uh, during the past lecture about games. So it's not, uh, this problem is not like uh, being, uh, being about like discussing like multiple players, adversaries, adversaries search. This is similar to the first topic that we have in this course, basically very similar to the search problem that we have had and those algorithms that you uh, basically worked on, uh, starting with like depth first algorithm, um, uh, search algorithm and greedy search and a star search algorithm. It's very similar to those uh, situation. So we ha have an agent, basically this agent is uh, trying to maximize its utility. It takes some actions in order to reach its, uh, its objective and its goal. But the difference here is that and, um, you know, when the agent starts from some point and wants to uh, take an action, for example, go to the next one, right? Um, in um, previous uh, uh, algorithm, it was kind of deterministic. So once the agent uh, knows where it wants to go according to the evaluation of the function that it has, then the action would uh, happen exactly as we expected. But in here, there are some... Uh, uncertainty. So even though we come up with the, you know, uh, with the plan that we should, for example, move from here, go to here, go here, go here, and finally go here to maximize our utility at this point, uh, this may not happen due to some uncertainty in, in the environment. For example, when we start uh, going to, to this, uh, to, to the north direction, there, there are some chance that, for example, the robot slides and goes to the, to the adjacent, uh, adjacent block or, or hit, hit the wall. So there are some uh, probability that we are going to, to consider uh, in, in this search problem. All right, so, so as we said, there are some like uh, no, noisy measurement or some, some imperfection um, in the environment that, that causes this. So since we are going to work with this example throughout this lecture, so let me explain a bit about that and then uh, we take it from here. Okay, um, for this problem, so we assume that the agent uh, can go to the direction that it decides 80% of the time. For example, if it decides to go to the north, 80% of the time that, that's, uh, that's going to happen. But there are going to be like 10% uh, of the time where the agent could, could slide to, uh, to, um, to, the, to the east or to the west. For example, at this point, when it is slide to, to the west, it's going to hit the walls and stay in within the same same block. But it also can slide into into uh, east uh, east block. So this is the scenario that we are, we are considering, and this is the difference between this uh, search problem and and the previous search algorithm that that we we have discussed during the first and second lecture. So we're gonna solve this search problem considering these uncertainties. Okay, so for each step when the agent uh, uh, is taken, it's, 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 there's gonna be some uh, rewards. So the rewards also can, can, be, can be negative here. Big reward normally comes, uh, comes at, the, at, the end, at the end of the game. And the goal of the set problem is to maximize some of those uh, rewards, rewards uh, along the way. Okay, so here is the uh, comparison that uh, we can make uh, between the deterministic grid work and a stochastic grid work. As we said uh, in the previous slide, 
if, for example, agent is, is at this location and this is the grid world, if, uh, mm, sorry, so a starting point is here. So if the agent, uh, for example, decide to go to the north, then if the grid world is deterministic, that's going to, to happen here. So the agent goes to the north. But in the, in the, in the stochastic grid world, when the agent starts at this state and decide to go to the north, uh, there are some chances that the agent could fall into the previous uh, previous block. And uh, for example, go in here, and most of the time maybe agent, the agent end up to the block where it was planning to go. So that's the difference. All right, so how we can solve uh, such problems? Basically, we can model such problem using Markov decision processes. And once we formulate that in that framework, then we can use uh, the solution to Markov decision processes to, to solve those such problems. So um, let us uh, first define uh, the Markov decision processes and what are the main components uh, in this formulation. So, um, there are going to be a set of states S um, in the problem. So basically, uh, as before, we're going to have a set of states. And uh, we assume that that set is SS capital. And there are going to be a set of actions A belong to capital A. And then there are going to be a transition function involved that um, tells the agent or tells us or describe the, the dy dynamic uh, condition of the environment saying that once the agent decided to go to, for example, to the north, uh, then what are the probabilities that can take the agent to the north and what are the probabilities that can take the agent to the east or west or south? And since this is, uh, since this is an, uh, you know, when the agent decide or commit to the action, since the outcome are uncertain, then we're going to be having this uh, transition function to describe those conditions for us. And for each uh, transition or for each move uh, from a state S to, to S prime, that there's going to be a reward associated with it. So I forgot to tell you that the transition function can be described as a conditional probability, meaning that given state S and action A, that we end up with a state S prime, uh, this is a probability that uh, tells us how this transition with what probability uh, can happen. All right, so there are going to be start states uh, uh, in, in the search problem. So we're going to be starting from a state. And then there might be a terminal state uh, in, in the problem. For example, in here, getting this reward at the corner. So as we said, MDPs are non-deterministic search. One way to solve them is the expected max. So right now you might be confused saying that, okay, we, we're supposed to not think about the game search problem. Uh, and now we are talking about the ex expected max. So as, as you know, the expected max is uh, uh, one of the, you know, uh, algorithm that we use to solve adversarial search or games problem. So let's see why, why uh, we can use expected max to solve Markov decision processes. It's not exactly expect max. It's part of you know the solution is expect max, not all of it. All right. Uh, so we talk about uh, Markov decision uh, processes, but uh, we haven't defined uh, what the Markov decision processes is. Basically, any process that uh, the future state is only depend on the current state and the action at the current time uh, can be uh, classified as Markov decision process. For example, in here, um, it, it, this is a general uh, definition of, of a, 
of the processes that uh, a state in the future, T plus one, uh, depend on uh, the state at the current time and the action at the current time, and also action at the, at the previous, uh, previous uh, time. But uh, Markov processes basically uh, is not that, and it's a simplified version of it. Uh, so let's show this in here. All right, so Markov processes is this one, meaning that uh, the probability of landing in the state uh, S prime in the future, it's only depend on the, uh, the current state and the action that we take from the current state. So it doesn't depend on, the, on any of the states uh, in the past or, action, uh, or the action uh, in the past. All right, policies. Uh, so we talk about um, Markov decision processes, and uh, we said that this is a non-deterministic non search problem, and it is different from the search problem that we studied before. Uh, so in, in the previous uh, techniques that we have uh, actually studied, so there was a single agent and the solution to that, those kinds of search problem was to find an optimal plan that kind of uh, maps is a sequence of action for us from the start to go. So basically, for example, if this is the starting point, this map, then uh, that, search, uh, that search plan or optimal plan tells us, for example, go here, go here and here, 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 until to, you reach to the, you know, the utilities that uh, uh, you planned and it's maximizing um, the total utility for you. As you can see here, it kind of tells you the, what the difference. Um, in the non-deterministic search, basically the solution to the problem is a set of action uh, from each, each state. So meaning that the policy pi star here uh, is a function that maps a set of states to a set of action. What does this mean? Meaning that if these are my state, right? If these are my state, at any given time, if I'm at any of this state, I know where to go. So if I, I'm here, so the policy tells me go to, to the west. If I'm here, the policy goes and uh, tells me go to the north. It doesn't basically show me where to start and where to end. For any given state, it tells me what to do if I am at that given state. So that's the, the difference. All right, so let's take a look at some optimal uh, policies here and um, compare these policies based on the rewards that is provided to the agent. Okay, so uh, remember the, the problem that we actually uh, defined at the beginning of this uh, lecture? Uh, so, and the definition of the policy. Uh, so it, this policy is one of the policies that we have come up with when the reward uh, for each step taken from one state to another is minus 0.01. Uh, and the objective of this search problem is to maximize the utility. As you can see here, the reward is negative. It's minus 0.01. And these are the policy that basically this uh, search problem is providing for us. So, you can see that the, the reward that is located in this grid is plus one and here. And if we get to that point, we kind of maximize our, our utility. But as you can see the reward, I mean, the, the policy tells you to move to this direction and then this direction and this direction. And then 
uh, reach to the maximum reward at the end of this corner. And it doesn't give you uh, this path. So what is the reason? The reason is that the algorithm is somehow conservative, meaning that it, since there is some chance that if I take this step to this adjustment block at the north, right, and if I'm here, and if I want to take the next step in here, there is some chance, like 10% of the time, I may fall into this block, and then uh, maybe since these are two, two terminal state, and then the game over with very large negative uh, value. Therefore, so I don't want to end up with those kind of uh, scenario. Therefore, I take this path to avoid the, 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 the danger. And in here, if, if you can see, here is the wall, right? Here is the wall. So the agent is uh, trying to kind of hit the wall until it falls into this uh, uh, block or to this adjacent block. So, uh, and this somehow shows the uh, level of the uh, uh, conservativeness of the of the of the agent not taking that north action. So here is another one. So as you can see here, the reward right now is a a bigger uh, negative number. Therefore, in this case, the uh, since for each step the algorithm is taken, it's gonna accumulate more negative number. Here the algorithm decide that if it is in this state, just take its chance and move to the north. There is some probability to fall in here, but uh, the agent take its chance because if it stays and try to you know hit itself to the wall until fall in here on here, and for each of those actions it's gonna get minus three minus uh, zero point zero three. So and it's going to be accumulated and become large uh, negative number. It's just take its chance to go to the north. Now here is another uh, reward value. So here the reward value even is bigger, uh, larger negative number. Therefore, you can see here the agent doesn't take this route anymore. It takes its chance to directly go up, and it know that it might fall in here. But since this uh, Reward going to be accumulated and at the end going to be a very large number It refers to go this round. And here you can see the reward is minus two. So the, when the agent is here, it, it prefers to just end the game as soon as possible. You can see that for each step is minus two. So it uh, prefers just to end the game at this point and not to take its chance to go back in here because it doesn't work, it's just plus one. And each step that's taken, it's, it's minus two. So these are different policies that's gonna be the solution of our Markov decision processes. So let's take a look at another, another example. So here is a uh, robot uh, racing car. And here is the Markov uh, uh, estate uh, uh, problem for this uh, racing uh, scenario. So uh, in this scenario, uh, we are assuming that the robot car wants to travel far very quickly. And there are going to be three states associated with this problem. So the first state is the, the cool state. And then we're going to have warm states. And then the overheated state where the car cannot be used anymore. So these are our states. And then we have two actions. So the robot car can go slow or can go fast. So at any of these states, so these actions are, are available to, to the robot car. Okay. Um, so when the robot car goes faster, it gets double, double reward. Uh, so if you want to see that, so just uh, look at this one. So if the state that's cool, if the robot is that cool state, if it goes faster, then it gets a reward of plus two. So it gets a reward of plus two, and there's some chance that it's going to be warm, and that chance is 0 0.5. And there's some chance that the, the car doesn't get, uh, doesn't get heated and get back again to the cool state. And the reward for that is plus two as well. 
And the probability of transition from the cool state to the cool state with the action of fast is also 0 0.5. Uh, and this one, agent is at the slow or at the cool state. And when it choose to go slow, so the action is slow, it get a reward of plus one. And when it is cool and it goes slow, uh, it uh, go back to the same state with probability of one. So that uh, kind of makes sense. But when the agent, I mean, the, the robot car is at warm state in here, if it goes fast with the probability of one, it gets overheated and goes to the overheated state. And the reward that it gets is, is minus 10. So this is also another uh, scenario that can happen to the car. And also when the car is at warm states, it could uh, go slow and get cool with probability of 0 0.5, and it could get warm with probability of 0 0.5, each with reward of plus one. So consider this one because when we pro, you know, um, provide the solution to market decision process, we are going to use uh, this example to provide some uh, uh, numerical computation to you to make sense of the formula. Okay, we can also uh, uh, draw the search tree for this uh, state, uh, Markov uh, decision problem states. Uh, for this Markov problem, basically. So we can, if you go back here, uh, to draw the tree, we start from one of these states. It doesn't matter which state, but we don't choose the terminal state. We can either choose the, the warm state or the cool state. So in here, we decide to choose uh, the, the cool state, so we start from there. And the two things can happen. If we go slow, then the car can go back to the cool state again. Uh, and if we go fast, then two things can happen. So this is for the slow. Uh, if we take like action slow, uh, based on the, uh, based on the, form, uh, the, the description of the problem in the previous slide, if we go slow, uh, the car is going to end up into the slow state and with the probability of one. That's the reason you can see only a one outcome from the Q state. And then if it goes fast, there are gonna be two consequences. The car could get warm, warmer, or it could get, it could stay at the, at the cool state as well. So this is also described in the, in the problem statement. Okay, so once we're at the, at the cool state, then we have the repeated uh, you know, scenario over here, also over here. But we are, we are at, the, at the warm state, we're gonna be end up in this uh, graph in here. So basically this is the uh, search tree for this, uh, for this problem. So, and we're gonna be using this in the, in the following slide. All right, how to solve it? So we talk about the, this problem and uh, its difference uh, between the normal and deterministic search problem. We said that it can be formulated using Markov decision processes. Now uh, we are going to solve this, this problem. But before solving it, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, do some, some, some formulation and define some quantity. So this is our state S that our agent could be. And we said that agent can take some actions. It takes some actions, but it doesn't, you know, uh, end up to state uh, spring right away because of some uncertainties. So it takes, it decides, for example, to go to, to, the, uh, to the south, and because of some uncertainty, it three things may happen. It may go to the to the to the south, or may go to the uh, 
uh, west or east. So this is the point that kind of describes that, that condition. So and we call it Q states. So it means that the agent committed to the actions, but the outcome of that action is uncertain. So that is going to be described by, by Q state in here. And in Q states, then there are going to be different possibilities that the agent may uh, end up. Therefore, uh, we are going to have the transition function that tells, OK, transition from S with action A ending up with uh, state S prime can be described as the probability, conditional probability uh, of being at state S prime given action A and starting from state S. And as we defined, there are going to be some reward associated with this uh, transition at the end. OK, so this is very important. Just uh, try to kind of digest the, this, this graph, because we are going to be working with this, uh, not only this lecture, but also for uh, the coming lecture, few coming lectures. And in, in, the, in, in the few weeks. So uh, this is very important to uh, know what's going on in here. Any, any questions so far? OK. All right. Okay, so uh, so what are the utilities in, in this uh, problem? So how we can define the utilities? So to do that, we need to know what are the preferences for our agent for the reward sequences. Uh, does the agent wants to have more reward or less reward? I mean, taking a sequence that end up with more reward or less reward. For example, this sequence gives the uh, additive uh, reward of five, but this sequence gives the agent uh, additive reward of nine. Which one the agent should prefer? Since we are maximizing the utilities, so we prefer that the agent prefer uh, more rewards when you know, solving the, the problem. So does the agent prefer to get the reward now or to get the reward later? So in here uh, is the case where the agent uh, received the reward at, uh, for example, time step two, and here received the reward immediately after its first uh, action. So it is reasonable to maximize the sum of reward. So it's why? Because we want to maximize the, the utility as we defined previously. It is also reasonable to prefer rewards now to prefer reward later. So how we can implement that? So how we can basically uh, formulate the problem that the rewards at this time kind of uh, so that the agent at this time get more reward than the future. So basically that can be implemented using decay exponentially uh, function. For example, if the reward at this point is one gem, then the reward at next time step gonna be multiplied by, by gamma, where gamma is between zero and one. And the next step, then the reward going to be multiplied by gamma one more time, and it becomes less and less. So if we uh, contribute or if we incorporate the value of gamma into our reward function in our formula, we somehow model this, uh, this property or this feature where the agent could get its rewards uh, earlier. OK, so. 
basically these are the steps that the agent taken to, to collect its reward. So at, at the first step, it gets uh, one gem. At the second step, it gets mul uh, gamma multiplied by that. And at the third step, it's going to be much, much less than that. So one of the examples, we said that gamma could be between 0 and 1. So now uh, gamma is 0 0.5. Then if you have the reward one, two, three, so uh, in here, it's gonna be multiplied by one, as we said for the next uh, steps, the gamma is going to be uh, exponentially increased and multiplied by that reward value. In here is 0 0.5 multiplied by two, in here he is 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 multiplied by, by three. Therefore, if you consider that decaying factor in the formula, then you will see that these two utility functions are not going to be equal, basically. Okay, so to solve this problem and define the utility function, we need to define uh, st stationary preferences. So here's the definition for stationary preferences. If an agent uh, prefers sequence of uh, A over sequence of B, then the agent will definitely uh, prefer the shifted version of those uh, preference. Uh, so if uh, the words are shifted by value of R in the future and the same happened for B, then the agent again prefer the shifted version of the words in the future over the shifted version of the reward uh, of B in the future. So basically that's the def definition of a stationary uh, preference. So if this holds, and basically this is a theorem, then these two, uh, we can use these two uh, formula to define our utility function. So the first feature is additive utility, meaning that the utility of the uh, sequence of the rewards is going to be the, um, the addition, the sum of those rewards. And discounted utility defined as, as this one. So it's going to be again the sum of those utility, but uh, somehow uh, multiplied by factor of gamma, where gamma is uh, between zero and one, meaning that uh, the utilities in the future are gonna have less significant uh, contribution in the total utility values. All right, what do we do with infinite utilities? So we, we need the process or the game end at some point of time. We don't want the game to continue, uh, con continue indefinitely. What do we do to do that? So there are uh, multiple solutions for, for this uh, situation. First, you can uh, define a game with finite horizon. For example, say after 50, 50 steps, you should end the game. And by that 50 step, you have to try to maximize your utility. So this is one of the solution. Uh, the second solution is using the discounting factor gamma between zero and one. Uh, meaning that for sequence of uh, utility R0 to R infinity, since your gamma, the discounting factor is between zero and one, eventually uh, you will get uh, converged to this value. And at some point of time, then there's gonna be no change in the game and basically the game going to be over. And also you we can define um, some uh, absorbing states, kind of defining the terminal state for, for the search problem. For example, in uh, the racing car, the overheated state is the absorbing state, but if still uh, it has lower probability, has low probability to go in the overheated state, this game also could you know, take long time to, to finish. Therefore, having 
um, decaying factor in our formulation gonna gonna help to end the game uh, in a finite number of steps. All right, so let's uh, summarize what we talked about. We defined the Markov decision processes. We said that it uh, consists of set of states. It has a starting state, it's not, and it has set of actions A that we can take from each state. And there is a, a transition function involved within that process, which is the probability of moving from state S to uh, a state as spring uh, as prime given action a and we said that for each transition from state s to a state s, s prime there's going to be some reward associated with that and we said we because we want to gain uh, finish in a finite time then we are going to um, include the discounted factor of gamma in our formulation and we also talk about MDP quantities so far, the, but the policy, we said what the policy is, the policy is a choice of action for each state in your game. And then we said uh, what the utilities are uh, in this uh, uh, problem. We said that the utility could be the sum of the rewards and also some of the discounted rewards uh, for the search problem. All right, so now we arrive at the point to discuss uh, solving MDP. As you can see from this illustration, solving MDP means that for each state, we find uh, the assign a given action to each state. For example, here is go to the west, here is go to the north. So this is going to be the policy that we are looking for uh, at the end when we solve the MDP, basically come up with the policy. Okay, some quantities uh, before the, discussing the solution to this problem. Uh, first is the notion of the, the value. So each state S uh, is going to have, a, have an like a optimal value that we define as V star S. And that is defined as the expected utility starting S and acting optimally afterward. Uh, so that's the V star S. That's going to be the utility of S in a simple language. And then we're going to be having the value of the Q state. That we show with the pair of S and A. And the optimal value of that is defined that as an uh, expected utility uh, starting out from state S uh, with action A and then acting optimally after that. So meaning that, so we are at this point. Um, so we have initiated an action from S, we take that action A and now we are here and we're gonna act optimally in here. Since these are kind of random, acting optimally in here means that to compute the expected max for basically the Q state. And then the, the final objective that we are looking for is the optimal policy. So we are looking, the optimal, uh, looking for the optimal policy. Uh, so it's, a, it's an optimal action from state S, meaning that for, for each state S, we want to have an optimal action. So at the end, when uh, the agent is in one of the states and follow this policy, uh, and considering all those uncertainties, then it's going to end up with the maximum amount of reward or utilities. So it's called the pi star of, of S. And for each S, we are going to have one uh, action associated with Okay, so these are the definition uh, of that, of the, um, mark of decision process applying for this kind of game. And now let's take a look at uh, a demo uh, where this demo basically solved using uh, mark of decision uh, process solution. We're going to discuss the, the solution after we've seen this uh, uh, good work. 
so if you can see here, there is noise 0 0.2. The noise meaning that the, the agent could, uh, you know, slide uh, left and right when it takes an action uh, to, to, to move forward. So 10% of the time, when it decides to go forward, it may end up to the left, 10% of the time it may end up to the right. That's the noise here is 0 0.2 or 20% of the time, the action of the agent is noisy. And then we have the discounted uh, uh, factor here at 0 0.9, and this is our, our, our gamma. And the living world here is zero. It means that from one state to another, after its transition, the uh, basically the reward that the agent get is zero. So here, here is uh, pi star uh, s. So for each state, basically we have a, have, we have an optimal value of v star s, and in here. As you can see, each state has um, four different values, and these are basically related to the Q uh, value of each state, given that action. So uh, we'll discuss how we can compute these values. OK. So Q values are the expected utility until the uh, optimal action. So the Q value are computed over here, Q, S, and A. And this is just the expected max at this Q, basically. If you remember that we said that if there's some probability associated, for example, to this, you basically multiply that probability with the value in here and then you add them up. So this is the definition of the expected max. So the Q value are computed in that way. All right, so once the, we compute the Q value for each action A, then we maximize that value and we come up with this V star S value. For example, in here, the agent it decide, decides to go to the north, right? But uh, for, with some probability, it goes to, to east, goes to the west, maybe goes to the north. Then it is under action A. So what if the agent decides to go to, for example, to, to, to east? So we can call this one uh, B, let's call it B. Well, let's call it a, a prime. So it goes in here, then it's going to have its own uh, Q function and its own uncertain uh, outcomes. Then, for example, in here, it's going to be a double prime, assuming that you have only these three action. Then you, when you take the maximization, you take the max of the basically max of Q, uh, S, A, Q, S, A prime, Q, S, A double prime. So then either you choose A, you choose A prime, or you choose a double prime. So for one of these functions, one of these values going to be uh, maximum. So you choose that, and uh, that's basically going to be your V star S. Oops. And how to compute those Q values is given in here. So your Q star S for given action A is the transition function or the conditional probability function in here multiplied by the reward at the state experiment you take the action S, A from S uh, plus 
the gamma uh, multiplied by uh, the value uh, of the S prime function at this point. So you do this for all those S prime. So this is one of your S prime, then you're gonna have another S prime here, another S prime here. So basically your S prime is a set Let's call it like S1, S2, S3. So this is S1, S2, S3. So basically you have the probability associated with each of these branches. And then that's going to be your probability. You multiply the probability with the reward that you have. For example, here you have the reward of 901, then plus the gamma factor 0 0.5, multiplied by the V star at, at this uh, location. We're now gonna say how you calculate V star at S prime. So basically to, to do that, we need to define a, recurs a recursive function. So this is the way, uh, let's move on. Therefore, if you combine these two functions, you're going to get the optimal value at the state S as the uh, maximum value of this uh, expression over uh, action A. So whichever A that is going to maximize your function, you choose that, and then you compute the, ex uh, the expected max for that action. Any question about, about this part? These equations are, are very important. We are going to use this equation here in this lecture and also in reinforcement learning in the next two lectures as well. So understanding them is very important. All right, no question? Okay, going back to the racing search tree. So this is the search tree that we come up with uh, from the MDP of the racing car. And basically this search tree can go on and on and on because as you can see, there's loop involved in the state graph. So therefore, if you wanna continue to uh, have an option to go to in, somehow in, infinite and forever. So what do we do with this kind of situation? So the idea is to do a depth, a limited computation, but with increasing depth until uh, change is small. So we're gonna do some computation and uh, uh, which there are some iteration involved and when we see that there is not going to be much change after some iteration, then we stop. So how do we solve this? Basically, uh, we previously talked about V star S. Now we have the notion of K in our formulation. And we want to solve this problem in uh, K time steps. So depth K is basically we use depth K expected max. Um, so we only extract this far. And for example, for this search tree, we could have um, depth of two. So we define, so this is going to be started from V, v naught, V1, and V2. So this is the way that we can make relation between this triangle and the depth K expected mechanism. We're gonna see the numerical uh, example for this search problem after we see this one. So these are the iteration that we have for the problem defined at the beginning. So it's a zero iteration, iteration one, 
you can see the rewards are appearing at the terminal states. And then gradually, the state's value are populated after each step and propagated through, through the state. Is iteration, iteration six. And then as we go up, uh, then the value of the state, Vs, are somehow going to stay constant. This is iteration 11, and as you can see, 0 0.7 in here doesn't change and somehow stay the same. Okay, so for our racing car example, uh, this time we want to uh, solve the problem in, in, in five iterations, starting with it, uh, uh, B naught and going up until we find the value for each of these states. A state cool, a state warm, and a state overheated. So the, the objective is that. Let's see how we can do that. So as you know, this is a recursive algorithm. So we start with uh, time step zero. At time step zero, there are gonna be uh, basically uh, no, no reward. So because that's uh, our, our basic last step, and in that last step, we don't take any action to get any, any reward. Therefore, at time step zero, the value for the states S is defined as, as zero. So we have to start from somewhere. And then uh, this is the way that we uh, basically solve, solve it. So if you take a look at those like iteration that we have in the previous example, K plus one uh, kind of refer to the time, time steps. And as you can see that is related to time step VK. And now we have V not S as zero. Therefore, we have a starting point to uh, start computing this. So when K is zero, then we can have V1S. And then uh, when we have V1S, then we can compute uh, V2S from it and then go to V3 and V4 for the previous example. Until the value of the V uh, for that given state uh, do not change anymore. So meaning that at some point you may get uh, V and S equal to the optimal value of the V at that state. So when you reach to that, then you are kind of find the optimal value for that given state. So complexity of it, what is the complexity of this, this algorithm? Okay. So as you can see here for each state S, we have to compute this. Uh, so therefore in here, so if we could approximate the complexity with the number of multiplication, uh, and if kind of S prime uh, is equal to capital S, then we're gonna be having like S number of multiplication in, in, this, uh, in this algorithm. And then since we have also S number of states, so the total number of states is S capital, total number of states. Therefore, you have to compute this formula, VK plus one S for S capital uh, number of states. And for each of them, you have S capital uh, basically arithmetic operation that somehow uh, represent our complexity. So to do this only for your S state, you have S2, uh, complexity of S2. But since at each state, we have some actions A, and this action A, this belong to set a, let's write it like that. So for each state S, we have A number of action, since we are maximizing over A, right? And we have A capital of them. Therefore, we have to uh, repeat this process A capital time. Therefore, the complexity is O squared A.
Okay. Uh, so there's a theorem that says the algorithm is converges and that theorem uses the property of this uh, decaying factor in, in the formula. So uh, one of the important points is that the policy may converge long before the value do. So let me explain this one using an example. All right. Uh, Okay, so we have our algorithm right now, and uh, we want to basically compute the V value for our racing car, car example. So let's see how we can do that. So we said that, okay, uh, V at time, uh, time step zero is zero for all states. So that's our, uh, def our definition because we said that at time step uh, zero, we cannot take any, any action to get, in, to get any reward. And basically we terminate that at that point. So therefore the value at the uh, last time step uh, is, is zero. So we start with that. So, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Now we want to calculate, we, one for each of these states, okay? So we say uh, we one cool, then you have to plug in all these, these values in there. For we one cool, we want to maximize this uh, equation or action A. So what are my action? I have two action. Our action is slow and uh, I have action fast, given that I'm in this state cool. So I have two action, it's slow, or action fast. I want to maximize it over these two uh, variables. So let's compute that. So now uh, let's assume that uh, we are in action cool and uh, in uh, state cool, and the action that we take is slow. So let's compute this, this value. So the probability or the transition function for that, uh, if you look at the cool state, uh, from cool state, we only go to the cool state. We don't, um, if we, the action is a slow. So if the action is a slow, we only go to the cool state. So let's compute this value for that. So the transition function for that is basically uh, the probability of uh, describing that situation, which is one. Therefore, we have one multiplied by uh, the reward. So the reward for that is uh, plus one. Uh, and then, so this is our reward uh, for this case. And then the gamma factor. For here, we assume that the gamma is one. So here we assume that gamma is one. One multiplied by Vk uh, s prime. So what is the value of Vk? So for us, uh, since k is one, vk is v naught, and v naught uh, s prime s our s prime is still cool. Therefore, it's going to be multiplied by zero here. So we have, we computed this first one. Uh, so from cool, if the k action is slow, we only end up with state cool again. So what if we take different action? If, what if we take action fast? So what's going to happen? If we take action fast, then uh, the action is going to be fast. Therefore, I have to find the associated uh, probability to that action. If I take action fast, I may end up uh, with uh, a state warm, um, basically with uh, probability of 0 0.5, or I may end up with state cool with probability of 0 0.5 and reward two for those two cases. Therefore, our probability is 0 0.5 uh, for the first one. Uh, the reward is two. Then uh, uh, gamma is one. Then multiply by V, V naught of cool. When we are going back in here, so that is zero. Then plus 0 0.5. The reward for going to warm is uh, two then plus gamma multiplied by the value uh, 
of the V at the warm state, which is uh, zero. Okay, so let's uh, find these values. So this one is one multiplied one is one. If we add this two value, and uh, this is zero, zero, then we have two here, two here. Uh, uh, this, this is going to be one plus one. Therefore, the value going to be two for this. So then we maximize over one and two, and we take that action. So here our action is going to be fast, and the value of the function is going to be two. So this is the value of the function if we take the action fast. And that's the, the optimal uh, action from that state. Uh, let me write that in here. How about the red one? So in the, in the red case, then again, we can uh, compute this, this function. Uh, we can compute this function uh, in the same way. Again, you maximize over two action because there are not more than two action when you are at state uh, warm, then you have two actions. You can go fast, okay, end up with overheated, then, or you can go slow. If you go slow, you may end up with warm state, or you may end up with the cool state. So these are your two actions. So uh, let, let's do that. Uh, so we're gonna be maximizing again over fast or a slow variable, fast or slow, and then these are the function that we have. Then the probability that uh, the probability describing the overheated uh, is one. If we take action fast, right? If we take action fast with the probability one, we end up with the overheated value. It's going to be one multiplied by uh, r, my reward, which is minus ten, and then gamma is one multiplied by the value of the v. Uh, V0 overheated. V0 overheated is in here, which is zero. Uh, therefore, this value is going to be minus 10. If we go fast, how about if we go slow? If we go slow, then we have the transition uh, function, which is the conditional probability of 0 0.5. It's going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by the reward. What reward I get? For plus one. Uh, plus the state, the V0 for this state. This V0 for this state is going to be zero and the gamma is one. And then plus, uh, if I go uh, slow, I may end up with this state, V0 state for this state is zero and the probability is 0 0.5. Therefore, uh, it's going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by the same thing, one plus, uh, uh, Okay, it's going to be uh, reward of one and the gamma factor of one and V zero warm is also zero. So, okay, so we are having them uh, gonna be maximizing over these two, going to be 0 0.5 and this one is going to be 0 0.5 and therefore the value is going to be uh, one for this. So you can do the same for the overheated case, uh, for the overheated case because this is the terminal states. Uh, this is the terminal state, therefore there's no, no transition from here to any other states, right? Therefore these t's are, are zero and basically you are maximizing something over zero and therefore the maximum value uh, that you can achieve for that is, is zero. And then you can repeat one more time and, and, and end up to V2. So after you do the repetition for this one at the top in here, then you're gonna come up with some values that those value uh, uh, are not changing anymore with time. And that's when basically your algorithm uh, converges. Okay, so these are the value. If you repeat the uh, for a uh, second time, 
then you are going to get this value. And as you go up, then this value is gonna change less and less. So, but what's the policy? So we come up with the values, right? We come up with the final values at each state. For example, uh, for state cool, we come up with some value like close to 3.5. And for state red, we come up with value 2.7, for example, if we consider gamma as one. So for this one, assume that our V star cool is, for example, 3.5. Then here, V star warm is 2.5. And then V star overheated is, is zero. Uh, so what does it tell me? So what, what do I do? Basically, if you take a look at this action that we did the maximization, we saw that if we take action slow, and again, um, sorry, for this one, I was action fast. So if we take action fast, when we are at cool, then we are gonna end up with the uh, higher reward value. And here again, the action fast, results to 3.5. And if we are at uh, basically uh, the warm state, if we take it slow, we end up with reward one, which is the maximum utility. And if we continue that one again, this one is a slow, a slow. What does it mean uh, for the robot card? It tells the robot card simply that if you are in the cool state, just go faster. Go faster, and even uh, you may end up with this cold state or in the warm state. But if you are in the warm state, you go slow. Why? Because if you go fast, then uh, you're going to end up with this situation which we don't want. So basically, at the end of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, solving this problem, the conclusion is: if you are in the cool state, go fast. If you are in the warm state, go slow. So that's a policy for, for, this, uh, for this problem. Okay, so, there are, so when you're solving, they're gonna be, you may end up with different policies. Some policies are bad, some policies is, are, are good. Okay, so let's, let's continue from here. Um, so we said that um, the reason uh, that we are solving the uh, MDP uh, the final objective is to come up with the, with the policy. And he said that policies uh, or the uh, function policies basically uh, are the function that assign uh, action to each state. So that's the uh, final solution that we are expecting to get after solving this uh, MDPs. Uh, so, uh, Computing the intermediate values or the values of each state are somehow used to come up with those policies. So as, as we explained uh, in previous slide, the computational complexity of it is about like uh, OS square AS. And somehow in the previous slide, you saw that policies are uh, converges uh, much earlier than the values of each state converge. So now uh, the purpose of this discussion afterward is that can we come up with a way that um, without computing the values at each state value, we directly compute the policies and then we update the policy instead to uh, somehow simplify the algorithm. So this is the intent uh, from now on. Um, so the, the answer for that is uh, yes, instead of like uh, do the iteration over the, the value for each state, we do the iteration for the policies. And this is the way that we are going to do it. So uh, we start with some, uh, when we are at state S, we consider some 
action from that state. That action could be optimal or could not be optimal. Either case, you know, because uh, we don't care. So we choose one action and that action is pi of s. So after we do that, then we compute the, the expected max of that value. Uh, we compute that and then under, uh, we use that uh, initial value in our uh, policy iteration as you will see in the following slide. Um, okay, so as you can see here right now, uh, the max operation uh, from here is, is eliminated. Why? Because right now we only consider the action, action pi in here. So when you consider the action pi and we somehow compute the expected max at, at this point. Therefore, there is no max over different, different states. So that's when we kind of get rid of this max operator, which is a nonlinear operator. So how does that, that helps? Let's see. So we talk about this, we could have, so the end, uh, uh, results that we are looking for is come up with the policy for our search for. So we also mentioned this example, and we are here, uh, this example. So let me explain this one now. Okay. So let's, for now, we do not con don't consider uh, this and this, the time step, and assume that this is kind of a equality in here. So we consider this one, right? Um, so for given action pi, uh, for example, for this state, we choose this action, right? Then uh, this action pi is somehow depend on the uh, action at the state that state is prime. And we do this over S prime belong to to S uh, states. Uh, therefore, we might have a bunch of equation here that, for example, gonna be S prime, S double prime, and so on. So we have a system of linear equation. So for action pi at state S, we have this uh, kind of linear equation, and then we are going to have multiple equation like this for other states. For example, uh, for a state B pi S prime, there, there are gonna be some things like this, and then the ex expression like that. And then V pi S double prime gonna be something like this. So basically gonna be ending up with some uh, sort of linear uh, system of equation for each of your state where uh, the quantity uh, v are going to be up here on the right hand. So we're going to have v pi s prime and then and so on, v pi dollars prime. So how many of them? We're going to have s capital of them. And how many unknown they're going to be there? They're going to be S capital unknown. So this is a linear uh, system of equation with S unknown. So you can solve this simply by all those uh, techniques that are available uh, to you, iterative techniques, or you can use least square, or you know, matrix inverse, pseudo, uh, not pseudo inverse, but Patrick inverse and all those uh, techniques that are available. So the one way is that, that we can kind of find these values. The other way is the iterative way that is written in here. So how does this work? So basically you are trying to update the value of uh, V at state S by considering the value at other states. And so when, when you are doing this, if you re repeat it for uh, some uh, 
given the steps, eventually you're going to be converging. So that value is going to be converged and your equation is not going to, I mean, the value of each state is not going to be changed anymore. Um, so you, you have that option as well. So you can solve this one using iterative techniques as well. So once you find these values, these values are going to be associated with some action pi of S, which may not be optimal. So once you find that, then you need to do the uh, uh, policy extraction, and then you do the uh, policy improvement on that. So uh, let's see how uh, we can do this. Okay. So assuming that we have computed those values, right? We don't say right now that those values are optimal because we need to do some iteration over the policy to get to the optimal. But uh, what if that we have V star S and how, how, we, how we can basically come up with the policy? So it's not obvious what I explained this one using the example for the, the racing uh, robot car, how you can extract that. So basically, uh, once you have all these values computed and you come up with the final optimal, not optimal value, with the value that converge for that given action, then what you do, you use the, this argument, arg max a. Then it tells you what action you take. So this is called policy extraction. So once you have uh, the uh, values for that state, for a given state and for all of them, uh, when you have that, then you can come up with the policy. This policy somehow tells you what action to take when you are in a given state. So in here, in this problem at the corner, these are the action. So these basically are, are your policy. It says that, okay, if you are here uh, with this reward value, then you should uh, hit yourself to the wall until you get to this location or this location. So these are the policy that we are looking for. So um, knowing the value of the state is not the final objective that we are looking for. Therefore, uh, after computing that, uh, so we compute this one for each given uh, action A, and therefore you are going to right now do the policy extraction. So basically you have done all the calculation for all point of S. Let me go back to show you that. Um, so in here, remember that we said that for given policy point of S compute this one, right? So we compute the Q for, for this, Q a pi of s and s, right? Then for this one, also you compute the q. For the other one, you compute the q. And then now you're looking for something that is maximum between all these q's. And then you find your action. So this is what we mean in, in here. So this is what we mean here. So we compute all these values that may not be optimal at this point. And then for that, we come up with this policy. It's called this policy extraction. Okay. Now, so that's the solution basically. Uh, now, uh, we are going to make some comparison between the value iteration and, and policy iteration. So this is the value iteration, the first solution that we had for the Markov decision processes. You remember this equation? So max A is involved, and we said that the, the complexity is OS square A. So this is one of the issue, and the other one is that then we are going to take the max is kind of a nonlinear operator, so we cannot use linear system of equation to solve it. And somehow the max is going to converge early. Um, which is our policy, I'll show you an example. So often policy converge faster. So let's 
take a look at this, this example. Uh, so I have two things in mind when you are uh, increasing this iteration. Take a look at this value. These are our policy that we are looking at. And take a look at the numbers and see when the number, when the policy is stop changing and when the numbers are stop changing. So again, we consider noise of two, discount of 0 0.9, and reward of zero. If you take a look at these, the policy are kind of like uh, converges uh, much early. And as you can see, the, the, the value V of S are still changing, but the policy uh, are not changing that much. Okay, so we said that, okay, we find the value, Q value for a given policy. And then uh, for each state, and we said that that policy might not, might not be basically the, the optimal one. So, so what do we do after that? So we do the policy evaluation and then we do the policy improvement. Policy improvement is the second step that we take the max over different action from that state. That's the policy improvement. And then we do the policy iteration. So we plug in the value of the V and the policy that we found in the equations to come up with the new policy values uh, until we repeat this process until the policy won't change anymore. So there is one example about this in the, in the lecture note. Take a look at that numerical example to clarify uh, this point for yourself. These are the mathematical equation. You won't be understanding them until you have a numerical example for yourself uh, on, a, on a paper. So this is the iteration that we do for the, for the policy, basically. Uh, so these are the value of the V at each given state. So once we have that value, then uh, we come up with the policy and then uh, when computing this one, we also somehow compute the value of uh, the state at each iteration so that we can use it for the next iteration in the policy iteration. So if you figure, if you do this on a paper, you will see that the computation are kind of very similar. But what, why we said that, okay, it is kind of, uh, this policy iteration is going to be simpler than the value iteration. The reason is that, uh, okay, policy iteration converges much faster than the value iteration. So in terms of complexity, for the policy iteration, we do OS square, but next time we also have to find uh, the optimal policy using the max operator. So basically we do the first part, and then we have to apply the max operator in terms of the computation is somehow similar. But in terms of number of iteration that you do, are, they are not similar. Policy iteration, they converge much, much faster than that. Um, let, let me quickly show you uh, the lecture note and the example that you can take a look at that. Um, here. Okay, please take a look at this, this lecture note. There are some numerical example in here, very useful. Um, so this is for mark of decision process. This is in the process, the car example. Um, also in here. And then at the end of this, in here, we have We have policy iteration. 
So basically, this is your equation, and this is your condition. If your policy uh, somehow doesn't change after doing some iteration, then it means that you somehow come up with the optimal policy for your search problem. Therefore, it is much simpler. So go through this example. So you assume that, as we said, you fix the action of pi of s. So here is my action pi of cool. And here is my action pi of warm and not. So it means that it's the first iteration. Just go through this and repeat this one. So the process starts from here. So basically these are the things that we want. We want to know where we are at each of these state, cool or warm, what should we do next? So that's the policy that we are looking for. So if you do the first iteration, you plug it in, in here, you come up with pi one, if you repeat this process one more time using the value that you're obtaining here uh, and here, then you can compute the value of pi two. And you'll see that after some iteration, you see that pi naught is a slow slope. You start it from a slow slope. You don't care whether they are optimal or not. And in the next iteration, we come up with fast and slow. And the next iteration, fast and slow again. And as you can see from here, there is no change and after uh, two iteration, the algorithm kind of converges. And this is where the computational complexity uh, reduced. Basically, it doesn't, really, it doesn't change the mathematical uh, expression that you have. You have to compute all those, but the number of those mathematical expressions are going to be reduced. The number of iterations are, are going to be reduced. 